Yeah. It's five too many. Dr. Drew's like, I have an I have a, a confidentiality clause, so I can't comment on that. So, you know, he took the money and ran. Um, here's where I went to the Justice Department website because in 2012, there's this pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company. Sorry, everybody, I stumble over words sometimes, and they're called Glasgow Smith Klein. Oh yeah. G G S K for short. There was a three billion dollar settlement. There was a federal complaint which said that this company hired Dr. Drew to talk about Wellbutrin (gasps) as a, as a sex drive booster. So here's, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Dr. Drew was paid to talk about Wellbutrin and say, it's not just for depression. It's also basically Viagra, like, you know, and he would never disclose that he was being paid by yeah, you can't Will Butrin, which is illegal. Yeah, like you can't you can't do that. So he would be on like love like Love Line at this point is on MTV. It's like it's on television. It's on the radio. He's making appearances and he's like, well, Butrin is a sex drive booster. It isn't. Or I, I think what it was is it's not that it's it doesn't decrease your sex drive. Okay. Like so other antidepressants can like decrease your sex drive. Will Butin doesn't affect it at all. Therefore, they were like, We're a sex drive <laughs> booster. No, you're not. You just might be in a better mood now and want to get laid. That's all it means. <laughs> anyway, he would go on his shows and be like, It's a sex drive booster. It isn't. Um, and they had to pay a three billion dollar settlement Holy over it. Shit. Yeah. Uh, by the way, one time he went on Love Line and said that Will Butrin can make women multi orgasmic. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure it does. No Dr. technique Drew. involved, right? Just the no, none at all. Yeah, you could just take the pill actually and just fucking lay around and it'll just come to you. Get it? Come Get it. to you. Oh, see what I did there. Okay. In 2014 episode of Love Line, um, a man called in. And he mentioned his fiance feels pain during sex because she has endotremosis. Damn it. I know how it's pronounced, but now I, I got I know it how to head. pronounce it, yes. but it's stumbling when I come out, when it comes out of my mouth. And I'm really sorry, Andrew. everybody. I know. Tremosis. 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 Yeah. Valerie Bertinelli's character had that on one day at a time. I totally don't remember this, Andrew but I believe you. Yes, God damn it. I can't say it now. Indriotremosis. <laughs> <laughs> anti disestablishmentarian <laughs> Super califragilistic expialidocious. So, moment- <laughs> God damn it. I know how it's pronounced. <laughs> And I can't so, ask Alexa because I can't say this. So this, this uh, woman, she had super califragilistic endrotremesis. Endrotremesis. <laughs> Don't cut any of this out. No, no, sorry. So, sorry. My sister had no. this. I mean, I yeah, I'm like, it's it, a but... real thing. So Dr. Drew um, <laughs> referred to this diagnosis. I'm, I'm going to skip the word, just go right to yeah. diagnosis as a garbage bag disorder <gasps> and suggested that she wasn't really sick and that it's just a thing like women say and that actually she maybe she was like sexually abused. And that's why it's all in her head, <gasps> basically, is what he was saying. I'm like, not cool. And I think what this is representative of, and we're going to talk more about this, is Dr. Drew is someone who diagnoses people from a distance. We talked about this. Yes. So we talked about this a little bit when we did our Oprah creeps and we talked about Dr. Phil and Dr. Phil loves to diagnose celebrities without ever actually talking to them. You might remember he did actually talk to Britney Spears, but then proceeded to like go on the media and like pretend he was her doctor. He wasn't. Dr. Drew is often brought on to talk shows or news programs, and he diagnoses people without actually interacting with them, which it's one thing to do it on Love Line. For example, the man who who calls in and says, you know, my girlfriend feels pain during sex, and he offers his, like, bullshit diagnosis. That's one thing. This is a person calling in. It's another to, like, go on CNN and speculate about 
people's mental health or their physical well-being. Endometriosis. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Thank you, Margo. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. We said at the top of the show. Okay. I'm going to mispronounce things. Us. Sorry. Okay. So he, he does this a lot. So like I said, you'll see him on various programs speculating about people's medical and psychological issues. Um, so in August, 2016, Dr. Drew is on one of his shows and he decided to start questioning the health of Hillary Clinton which, oh, by the way, this was a Trump Giuliani thing. Like, f- disgraced former President Donald Trump was starting all these, t- had all these talking points where it was like, she's in mental decline. She had a stroke. She had this. She had that. Dr. Drew basically starts repeating these talking points on his show. And he is a doctor. So he looks like he knows what he's talking about. People right. start believing what he's saying. He actually. He even like incorrectly reported from a strong source, and I'm going to put that shit in quotes, that Clinton was having problems from a brain injury. Like, it's all fucking made up. It's just made up. And like, do better, Dr. Drew. Just do fucking better, you know? And then once it like, and then he starts, then COVID-19 comes once again. And we have all these people who, they look to Dr. Drew. They think he's, you know, because he is a real doctor. And he's just like, you know, it's the flu. Okay. I heard him do yeah. that, Sonia. Yeah. Yeah. He was on, he was on K-Rock. K-Rock had lost the morning morning show, but he used to call in once a week because mm-hmm. I used to listen online. He had his uh, libertarian talking points that he'd like <laughs> to give. He was on the rush. He was on Trump's mm-hmm. council and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyway, when they were bringing this up, one of the hosts turned out to have COVID, but she had it in January or like late January, right. early February before everybody knew what it was. And she was out for a week and she was describing the symptoms and it was just sort of like, oh, you just had a bad flu. And she's like, no, mm-hmm. no, no, I was really, really sick. And then a few weeks later, it was like, you know, two years ago, just before we were all shut down. Yeah. Like, it's just the flu. Why is everybody freaking out? What do you know? He just was so angry about it. Yeah. And then like two days later, we were shut down. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Continue. He, no, he called it a press induced panic. Yep. You know, it's just, um, yeah, it's just a flu. You know, um, your chances of dying from the disease are less than being hit by an asteroid is what he was telling people. Like, not helpful, Dr. Drew. No, and lots of things are less likely than a hit by an <laughs> asteroid. It doesn't mean you don't look out for it. I mean... Yeah. It's like, shut up. Shut up. So, you know, I'm like, after being called out for being Dr. Stupid, Dr. <laughs> Drew apologized. People had told them to listen to the CDC and Dr. Fauci and all this stuff. And then I just wanted to say that in December 2020, Dr. Drew himself got COVID. And yeah, it probably really fucking sucked. So... He doesn't say, like, it's just a flu, but he still is like, you know, why are we shutting down schools? Why do we have mask mandates in school? You know, that kind of bullshit, which as a parent with a child in school makes me super angry. He currently co-hosts a podcast with Adam Carolla. He rarely, rarely confronts Carolla when when he's wrong. Not saying anything is condoning it when you're on a show like that, I think. It's giving it consent. Yes. And when you go to his Twitter, which is linked in the show notes, he's constantly retweeting things that are questionable at best about COVID and things like that. And politics, which, by the way, I'm like, why is Dr. Drew talking about politics? Whatever. Um, And I think when you're a blue checkmark on Twitter, like retweeting without comment is agreement. Yes. Like, and he's amplifying misinformation and dangerous rhetoric, rhetoric. And I think Dr. Drew needs to do better. I think he's a fucking creep and he needs to do better. And that bums me out because I loved Love Line. Yeah. And I love Dr. Drew. And I used to go to Live 105's like summer concerts. And one year Dr. Drew was there and he was so handsome. He's so handsome in person. I was like, oh my God. Hey, Dr. Drew. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're giving me the baby. Oh, do you I'm remember here. he used to do a thing where if young women called in and they had kind of a baby voice? Yes. He would say, I bet you were molested. 
And then he could say he could pick your he could figure out when you were molested co- I, coming yes. from your voice, how young you sound in your voice. Yes. And he just said and it like there's no big deal to that. Yeah. And then he at one point. So he used to say it like that. And then he changed it to how old were you when your dad left? Ugh. And so, and then and here's the thing. So women would call and be like, hi, Dr. Drew. I'm calling about blah, 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 blah. And I then you know, how, <laughs> yes, about my super califragilistic expialidocious. You know, he would say, how old were you when your father left? And I. Most of the time he was right. I will say like, they'd be say four or five, you know, so, but yeah, it's a, it's a shitty thing to do. It's still, yeah, yeah, exactly. He never did shit like that to the men. And yeah, love line was still in ways it was progressive, but in other ways it was still sexist. And, and I say a little, like a little homophobic too. Because well, like he he had a lot of theories about gay sex and how anal sex shouldn't be done at all, and which means you know it's like, it. and I'm like whatever, dude. Like he also, so, yeah. from what I understand, at the ABA, which is, was a book uh, association, when he had a book that he was promoting about his life, his wife had triplets, and yeah, that's yeah. So he was promoting this book about being a family man, and he was at this convention in New York. He was published by the same people who published Jenna Jameson's book, Make Love Like a Porn Star. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to be doing press interviews, and he was basically just talking to her the whole time. Mm. Maybe he liked her. Pretty lady, maybe. 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 Maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I know that he would just do anything for a buck, because I worked in um, healthcare PR when I first started working in New York, and he was one of the ones that... You know, there'd be a campaign for a certain kind of drug and they would do like a, we did a read, it it was like a, should you get therapy or not get therapy? And they had the cast of Family of Five, is that was the name of the show, where the kids were, it was five kids and their parents died. Oh, Party of Five. Party of Five, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cast from there on the stage and he was just talking about therapy with them and he was paid like 25 grand or something like that. Mm -hmm. So And then it was just sort of passed around like, yeah, he'll do anything for a buck. He really will. Yeah. And I think it's pretty obvious he takes money from drug companies and doesn't disclose that he's done that and then recommends those drugs on different platforms. And, and it's like big rules against that. Yeah. Yes. It's problematic as fuck. Right. So, but I, I do think Dr. Drew could do better. Like, Absolutely. He, he just, can. Yeah. He just chooses not to, which is, makes him a creep in my book. Yeah. So now let's talk about the bigger creep, and that's Holy Adam Carolla. Shit. Yeah. Let's take a let's take a quick break and we'll go yes. into Carolla. Okay. I I didn't list every creepy thing that Adam Carolla's ever said because then the show would the, the show would never fucking end. So let's start let's start at the beginning though. Adam Carolla was born May 27th, 1964. His parents were Jim and Chris Carolla. He was raised in North Hollywood in Los Angeles. He attended North Hollywood High School. He did not receive his high school diploma for years because it was held by the school until he paid off a library fine. I only mention this because he mentioned it all the fucking time. And finally, yes. And then finally on like one of his rando shows, he like went to the school, paid the fine and got his diploma. I'm like, whatever um he mentions a lot of this stuff all the time by the way if you listen to his shows uh he began living on his own at age 18 and he worked a series of jobs he worked as a carpet cleaner a carpenter a boxing instructor and a traffic school instructor i will say this and we don't want to look shame people but i think adam carolla has the face of a boxing instructor you know <laughs> what i mean sorry not sorry some women have a big crush on him i have to say I don't I get that. The time. Yeah. Don't get it. Uh, in the early 90s, he studied improv with the Ground Lanes and was a member of the Acme Comedy Troupe. Mm-hmm. And I did not know that at all. In 94, he was working as a boxing trainer and he was helping some dude named Jimmy Kimmel prepare for a fight that was being staged by uh, K Rock. Mm-hmm. Once again, we're back to K Rock. Jimmy was a regular on Kevin and Bean. Yep. Was that, was that a morning to. show? That was the was show that a I listened show? to. Yeah, for 30 okay. years. Yeah. Okay. Not, I didn't listen for 30 years, but it was on the yes. air for like forever. And then they got canceled. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So Kimmel was a regular on the show. I guess then he was like 